Hey guys, David Vos here. Well, it's a beautiful day out here. There's a few clouds, but it doesn't look like it's going to really rain any or anything. Um, but it looks like it's going to rain in Florida. Well, I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I hope you're not in Florida. Oh, friends. Um, I, I turned this on today. I wasn't even going to do I hadn't thought of doing this until just a few minutes ago I had some work to do I was going to do that instead but I decided it was more important I sit down first and do this video because something hit me I remember several months ago time flies I don't know when it was it was maybe a year ago but I mean it's you know I've been saying it for a while I think probably for two or three years probably but not like as a big main theme, you know, like I did a whole video on it, but I mentioned it throughout several of my videos. That I thought it was odd that everybody, basically conservatives, we'll call them conservatives, they, you might categorize a lot of them as Christian. Probably. Probably conservatives are mostly Christian. And it, it seemed like they were all being funneled. They were leaving California. They were... They had to leave. They couldn't afford to live in California or New York or anywhere. But they were all going to basically Texas and Florida, but also probably Georgia, Alabama, Louisiana, and Mississippi. The whole southern states. And it wasn't just that they went down there willy-nilly, but they sent a member of the Skull and Bones, DeSantis, he wasn't a member of Skull and Bones. He was a member of a sister secret society at Yale. And they were, they're all the same secret society, but there's different divisions. And we're not aware of that. You got the Skull and Bones and you got his division. But anyway, he was, he was brought up in as one of the elite children prepared for politics. And he took over Florida and, oh, he's a good guy. Come on down, all you Christians. And we're not going to tax you to death down here. We're, we're going to make, you're going to have some freedom. Now, a lot of the reason why that ended up happening because of COVID, it drove us out, right? Because in certain places, like especially liberal states, they were cracking down. You couldn't leave your house. You, you know, it was terrible. So there was a little period of time during the COV idea that it's just been recent and everybody Blocked out of California, New York, and the northern states, and went to Florida and Texas. And I thought that was odd. And I used to say, I think they're bringing them down there for a reason. I mean, uh, there was the 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 governor of Texas who was also a very conservative guy. I think he's in a wheelchair guy. But they were fighting the Biden administration on the people coming over the border and the fentanyl and all of that. And so it, it made for television. It was a war between good and evil. And so all the Christians all flocked down there. And I thought, man, what a great way to get them all in one spot. And I remember all the hurricanes that used to, prior to that, start, was coming through in every hurricane season and wiping out Houston or Fort Lauderdale or somewhere. And I thought, man, I wonder if that's what they're planning. So, but that area was a, wasn't just like the Christians. It was more of a group of type of Christians, like the conservative political, the voters, right? Um, and there, and there's that group. And then I want to talk another, about another group that isn't necessarily even Christian, but they have Christian values, but maybe more Christian values than the Christians. But they're a little angry. And those are the ones we call the hillbillies. There's different kinds of hillbillies, but the ones we call the hillbillies are the ones in the Appalachians and that kind of thing. And they got shotguns. And they believe in the eye for an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. So that's not really actual true Christian. But then that's kind of what all the other Christians believe in, except they believe, you know, leave your shotgun home. You're not allowed to have those things. 
but the government's going to pay back all the world and do an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, except that, you know, the government's immoral to start with, and they're making a profit off of that. So these Christians are just people that like to hang on to their traditions, but they're not really Christians. They don't even go to church. But they do kind of basically believe in conservatism. So you've got several different groups. We've got another group that live in the mountains around where I'm at. Um, I'm not right where I'm at because I'm surrounded by a whole bunch of native Indians and, and you got to go through a native Indian reservation on any side once you come into my this little landlocked area where I live is not Indian reservation, but all around me is. And the thing about this area in the West is we're mostly, I mean, there's a lot of native peoples, a lot of them um, in places like New Mexico, although some of New Mexico is more like the uh, Mexican people that came over and became what we call New Mexicans. You know, they're, they're, they're Spanish heritage, but they're more just Americans and Chicanos and that kind of thing. But on the western side of New Mexico, it's all native. And there's a lot of natives everywhere in New Mexico, but there's also, in some of the major towns, there's like Hispanics. But these, these I'm talking about this, it's important to understand that there's different kinds. So we can't just pigeonhole everybody when I say conservative. I would say that natives might be more conservative. However, they are so liberal. They don't know that they're really liberal in the sense that they're going to vote for people who can give them a paycheck. People can promise them welfare. People that can... Now, that may be changing, just like with the the African-American uh, chunk of the voting bloc, which is going more and more conservative because beginning to see through this, I think it's a big eye opener to watch the world just disintegrate. And I don't think it's very hard to immediately blame, first of all, the liberals, you know, all around the world. I mean, you've got these liberals like Mark, Mark Hahn and Merkel and these, you know, people that, that have run Britain and the United States for for years, but the modern conservatives like Trump and uh, the guy that took or somebody took over Italy recently or whatever, I think it's a woman, but they, they claim to be real big conservatives, kind of following in the Trump model. I think they're just swinging the pendulum back to where we got to do something about the liberals because they, they're ruining the world after they destroy it, mind you. We'll let the liberals destroy everything first. Because I think the, the, they're all working together. One side of the pendulum destroys everything. The other side comes back and puts an iron curtain over it. So now that what's left, you can't leave it. The status quo sets in. If they've taken your guns, that remains that way, right? If they've taken away your freedoms, given you taxes or done anything or made children, all your children transgender, well, that will remain that way. We can't go backwards. We can't fix any of these problems. But we'll promise that we won't get any worse until the next election when we swing the pendulum back the other way. But anyway, enough of that kind of... I don't even know why I got off into that. But where I'm at, these native peoples are very liberal in the sense that they want their money and they're going to vote probably many of them Democrats. However, they're conservative in their heart. They're very Christian-like. And I, they also have an inde a vendetta against the government and for the past wrongs. So I don't know that they're going to be easily persuaded during these times that we live in. And I may have found a perfect little haven in between these native tribes that's not necessarily on the native tribe land, which I wouldn't mind being because these people are fair. They're the best people I've ever known. And I don't think they, I don't think they're prejudiced in any way, far less prejudiced than any people I've ever known. They will stand there at the gas pump and talk to you and be your best friend. They don't, you know, when I moved here, I thought, oh, they would be like, my, my perception was that they didn't want 
white people near them and they felt different and they were, you know, and they didn't like America and stuff. The truth is they love America more than most Americans and they're more courteous and less prejudiced in many ways. I'm not saying it's across the board. I mean, there's always differences everywhere, but so anyway, I might be in a really good place. And, and that's important for you to know why I believe that, because I want to talk about these hillbillies first when the Appalachians, they're the poor. They're not these sl city slickers up there in New York. Notice that the hurricane didn't hit New York, right? Remember all the Christians and the conservatives were sent to Florida. And I believe like all the way along that area, Georgia and Mississippi and Louisiana and Texas. And all the people from California left and went to Texas, I guess. Years ago, they went to Idaho and places like that. I think some of them went there, Boise. Some of them went to Salt Lake. But, and then a lot of them went to Phoenix. But Phoenix was overrun by Hispanics coming over the border and refugees and stuff. And I don't know what's going on there anymore. But I do know that not far from Phoenix and Phoenix itself is full of a lot of what we would call, I would say, more like New Agers. They're, they're believers in the Lord. Maybe closer to uh, the truth about history and the, the world than, than most Christians. They believe a lot of them in Jesus. A lot of them believe in Buddha. I do too. I believe Jesus was the Christ. The firstborn of all creation. But that's not what we're talking about today. A lot of New Agers do too. They came from Christian backgrounds. They kind of bend their New Ageism around what they kind of believe. And they end up kind of believing. I think this new religion of flat earth and uh, aliens and, you know, alien federations, galactic federations stuff got creeping into there. If you go to Sedona, which is a little bit north of Phoenix, there's all these New Agers. And there's a lot of alien abductees there. Uh, people teaching you uh, about, you know, the Galactic Federation and channeling the Inky or, so, you know, some crazy, stupid things. But that's just this little group, right? There's a little group. They got their little hubbub and they're in Sedona. But I think if you go out towards like Payson and Prescott and Cottonwood and, you know, so Sholo... And over, and as you're going this way over Snowflake and towards where I'm at to New Mexico, there's just lots of concha. There's you know thousands of people just out in their little cabins in the hills, and then the junipers, and then the in the tops of the mountains where there's a lot of forests. They're they're back in there too. Arizona and Western New Mexico, and these are people that I suppose are more conservative. I feel like a lot of kind of Christian roots, but they don't trust religion. And I just think that this is a really good spectrum of what is the best of the best here in this area. Payson, Arizona, Holbrook and, and, and uh, that area is a lot of natives too. And all the way up through uh, New Mexico, going through Farmington, Aztec, and up through Colorado and uh, Cortez and Durango and all of that. I think it's uh, a lot of new agey kind of people moving in. Hippie like type people. Trinidad, Colorado, hippies. There's a lot of, they're, they're all smoking marijuana, you know, there. Colorado and, you know, people in Utah and Idaho and New Mexico. They, they can go to Colorado and buy their stuff. They're just right there on the border. But also New Mexico, it's legal. And I'm not sure how many other places it's legal around here. So this is kind of a new agey type place. And I think it's better because the government hates Christians. And they don't necessarily think we're Christians. They think we're uh, new agers who believes in the coming of the great, you know, Metatron or some silly thing, you know, and they don't realize most of these New Agers probably are Christians, but in a better way than you could even imagine. But what they don't like is these political Christians that are anti-abortionists that are out, you know, in the streets trying to 
uh, demand the political Christianity. And where did all those conservative political conservatives, conservatives, Sean Hannity watching Laura Ingram watching maybe Alex Jones, Tucker Carlson, uh, these kinds of people. Our government doesn't like them. They're political Christians. They're Oral Roberts. They're Billy Graham in the past. They are the mega churches down there in Houston and up there in Dallas and all that area. It's a big mega kind of Christian get rich, think rich, grow rich, get involved in politics, get your jet. Everybody ought to have a jet for their private use and fly to these mega churches and preach, praise the Lord and dancing. And, and so that group of individuals, they hate. Because I, I think a lot of them are conservative and probably going to vote Trump. So Elon Musk moved his business from California to Texas. Trump moved out of New York and went to Florida. By the way, I think uh, Mar-a-Lago may be wiped off the face of the earth. And that's not just an irony. I think it's a it's what they're planning. Not that they even... Not that Trump's not in on it with him. Right? It's not about them making money at this point. The world's ending. They don't care about their money anymore. They're going to use all their money to to get rid of all of us peasants that's trying to hold them back. And then we're going to show you in this video that the, the plan, that what I'm about to share with you that I think may be going to happen has been in the works and has been planning for a long time. A long time, more than you can imagine. These These storms. So they moved all the Christians, that kind of Christian, conservatives, Sean Hannity Christians, down there to Florida, in Texas, Louisiana, Georgia, and Mississippi, Alabama. And so I would say, I want to section those into three sections. You got the Appalachian crew. It doesn't go to New York. It doesn't go. It goes up to about Washington, North Carolina. And that's about the end of it. Beyond that, you got a bunch of liberal like slums, right? They're either the elite rich that own the skyscrapers or the poor slums in Washington and New York and Philadelphia. And they're voting for more welfare and more this, more that. Those are the liberals. And they want those. They want to keep those. And they want because they vote for them. And they got a consensus that we just feed the, the mice, put a little cheese in their cage, and they're happy. Okay, so they're not, they don't want less of them. After the fall of mankind, they'll get rid of them too. You guys voting in your little welfare baskets, you're going to be gone once they don't need you anymore. Right now, they just need a voting block. So... The whole Appalachians, Carolinas and all of that, and the Virginia, I don't know about Virginia as much. I mean, there are pockets of different kinds all over through here, but mostly these Appalachian group going down through Alabama, Georgia. That was taken out pretty well by this Hurricane Helene. The one that's about to hit any moment, it may be hitting right now as I do this video, is Milton. And that's going to completely wipe out Florida. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, come on, Dave, it's just a hurricane. It'll just do some damage, maybe $50 billion. They'll fix it. Everything will be fine. Well, I'm not sure. The areas that M Helene hit, where it hit, those little towns are wiped out completely. They're not huge cities. They're not so worried about the cities like Atlanta, Georgia. There's probably a lot of people on welfare there too. They're not so worried about these big major cities. But all these Appalachian hillbillies got to go with their shotguns. And there are no more people there. And those who survived it will have to leave because the infrastructure is going to leave. They'll all be moving out over the next few years. Now, initially, they they won't be voting. The Carolinas, North Carolinas, uh, 
Virginia, Georgia, Tennessee, those people aren't going to be voting much. They're going to be displaced. They're not even going to thinking about voting. Now, yes, it may backfire and they may vote more than would have normally voted. Maybe the whole world, maybe even the liberals will change your mind all of the last minute and say, we ain't vote for this. They're trying to kill us, right? However, I think they're banking on that liberals will continue to vote liberal, get their checks in the mail, get their EBT cards, you know, don't have to work. They pay them to stay home and that kind of thing and keep the drug train running and keep them on these medical drugs like Prozac. They like all that. They want to all get their social security insane checks keep taking their Zoloft or whatever it is that they're doing and just go fishing. So they got the Appalachians. They're wiped out. The heart of it. And if they didn't get enough of them, they can bring another hurricane through here in a few weeks. You know, we can do a one-two punch. We, we can do this. They're making these out there in the Gulf with these big ships and they're steaming uh, this mixture of water vapor and whatever up into the air and they're using radar to guide these systems so what would normally have been in the hurricane season a category two or three will now be a four or a five and if they really wanted to if they have you know if they've got this technology maybe they could ramp one up to a six so we now know that milton's about to hit florida it's hitting it as we speak I just about an hour ago was looking to see what, what the damage was so far, what was happening. I wasn't sure when it was supposed to hit. And I noticed that there was this one video where not the storm itself. It, they're going to, they're waiting for that storm to, uh, for another hour or so. I, or I don't know when, but when I watch it, they were saying that just the outer little band was beginning to hit. Not the storm or the eye of the storm or anything like that. Just the outer little bands. And there was this camera that was on a bridge, a flat bridge, no top, just a kind of a surface cement bridge. And there was some traffic coming across it. I guess they were still trying to get out. I don't know what's going on. There was a cop car. I guess they were in their mind thinking, okay, we got 30 minutes, right? We could still get out. They hadn't closed the road yet. Well, this was not the real storm. It was just the beginning and it looked so severe that I would say if you were standing outside of your car, you would have probably been thrown and swept up and thrown into the sea. And it looked like it was about to take out the bridge and it wasn't even the storm yet. The cars were probably heavy enough. They were already on their way. They probably made it. But it looked like the water was going over the bridge and washing over waves. They might not have even made it. And that was just an hour ago. Something tells me, I believe this, and it hasn't happened yet, we'll see, but I think this is going to be the worst storm of all of history. That's what they're going to claim, and the damage is going to be worse than anything we've ever seen. I believe Florida might be completely gone after this. So we got the Appalachians in certain areas that are just gone. Like, a third of Asheville is gone. You know, and the rest of the small towns all around there, and I don't know how many different counties are gone. Because all the towns were, the stores and stuff were down in the gulches and they was all washed out. The people in their little cabins up on the hill, they might not have got washed out, but they ain't got no more stores. They got nowhere to get groceries. And they want them out. So they might burn the rest of them out. So they're gone. Florida will probably be gone. At least, I mean, we're just guessing. At least 50% of, of the people in Florida might just be gone tomorrow. And I, this is not clickbait. I don't mean to scare you guys. No, I don't know everything. I don't know if it's going to happen. But I feel like a Category 4, when it hits land, and you've just got this short little... Land bridge there. Florida's not very long. And it sweeps right and left. Basically gets the whole. 
the whole island of Florida. And the water that's going to come down is going to be so severe. The flooding is going to be probably in areas where it's not even where the actual eye of the storm hit, but in other areas, probably southern Florida will be all flooded and the infrastructure gone. People will have to move because there won't be any more hotels and businesses. It won't even be pretty there for a while because it'll be all this mess. And, and with all the, the boards and the piles of garbage, it was everywhere. I'm sure they tried getting as much as they could, but they didn't have much time. Those boards and things laying around trees, I don't think they got it all cleaned up. They're going to be like little like weapons flying around in the air, just completely demolishing Florida. Now, I'm just giving one scenario. Maybe it will calm down, go through, be a little flooding, a little wind, everything will be fine. But if I'm right, and if I, because I, I, I feel this, and I know a lot of you are seeing it right this, as we speak, maybe by the time I get this loaded, you guys will say, yeah, you were right. Or no, couldn't end farther from the truth. But this is what I'm feeling. This is what I think. They, that Appalachian thing was, un, it was unbelievable. It wasn't natural. We saw that they were manufacturing it. If they're going to manufacture it, they're going to make it bigger than it would be normally. And they're going to put it in places it wouldn't normally go. And they'll leave it there longer than it would normally, you know. They might have radar beams going there. So they can just sort of like hover that thing right over Florida for hours until it's just gone. If that's what they want to do. I mean, look, if they moved all these political conservative Christians down there to Florida and Texas. my and I said this, like I said, I said this years ago over and over again. They're moving them down there to wipe them out. A hurricane's going to come along. And literally wipe them out. When I would say that, I kept saying it. I thought, well, psh, how is one hurricane? I mean, they're going to have to have one after the other, after the other, after the other to get rid of all the people in Texas and Florida. I never even thought about that there'd be a storm big enough to wipe out all of Florida in one foul swoop. And the Appalachians in one foul swoop. I think that after Milton, maybe a week later, it could be a few days, it could be two weeks later. October all the way to November is the season for these hurricanes. I think there's going to be a major one that's going to hit like Houston area and go all the way up through San Antonio and, and it's going to have flooding. Maybe Dallas. I, I I feel like they might have to hit Texas with a couple of them. Mega storms. Maybe they're practicing. They're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger because this one's bigger than the last one. And Right now, we don't know what that storm might be. There was one that was called Leslie, and it petered out or went the other direction. I think there was one called Kirk. There's another one called Nadine. I can't get the story straight as to whether or not it's actually coming towards Florida or Texas. Yet, it's out there a ways. It may be petering out. I don't know. But there's another one that doesn't even got a name on it yet. Now, let me share with you a couple of reasons why this makes sense other than what we've already said and and they might be doing this in other places too in Europe I heard this one Leslie or whatever whichever one it was or Kirk veered off and heading for England right now <laughs> I don't know if it's going to hit there but I don't know if you heard about I mentioned it in one of my videos a few days ago that for all these years as far as I know for hundreds and hundreds of years, maybe thousands, I, I don't know, probably thousands, we've had this thing called the Sahara Desert in northern Africa. And it's nothing but sand for, I don't know, a thousand miles, you know, it's just nothing but sand. And it's the hottest place basically on earth. And because there's so much sand there, the sun beats down on it so hard that it heats all that sand up and it makes a really big hot spot like the hottest place on earth like 140 degrees and down under the sand it's like a big huge battery of heat and that's where this low pressure begins and it begins to rise up this heat and go into the atmosphere and make these currents these weather currents start off from there and they will usually go from there over to Probably sometimes that way to Brazil, 
Sometimes they'll go to Central America, and sometimes for a certain period of time, when the weather patterns are what they usually are at this season, they start making their way to the United States. And we always have a series of hurricanes, one after the other. I remember, uh, I don't know how many years ago, there was a year where, and I don't remember the names of these hurricanes, there's been so many of them, but I remember years ago, we had one that hit Florida, then the next one hit Houston, and then another one hit Corpus Christi or some other place, you know. And we had like three in a row, and they were major. I think I think one hit New Orleans or something. It was a big, the whole season was the worst they'd ever seen, and people were dying, and you know. And Remember that one time when <laughs> New Orleans was underwater, right? Remember that time when Houston got hit? I mean, this has been going on. But we survived. Texas survived. These weren't, these might have been fives, hurricane level five. But by the time they would hit, they would end up being tropical depressions or they'd just be a one or a two. But the one that's hitting, this one named Milton that's hitting Florida right now is a category four as it hits. It'll be a three, a heavy three in the middle of Florida. And I think it's got more water in there than normal because it's wide. It covers the whole state. And you saw all those big boats out in the Gulf blowing the the mixture, the concoction that they make where they heat some water and these fluids and these vapors go up in the sky and they're creating it. And then they use the radar to pull it in or to guide them. So they can just guide it right where they want. And think about it. That one that they sent to the Appalachians, hit square on the Appalachians, all the way through Georgia, it did damage in Tennessee. Terrible damage. You see all the, look at what, in Florida, the first one, Helene, you see all the piles of boards and all this stuff out in, along the streets. It Florida already got hit by that one. Now they're making another sweep. And this time it's going to be a bullseye and probably just hover right over Florida. And I think that if the storm winds and the boards and the flying objects don't kill you, then the flooding and the depths of the water and they might just leave you there for weeks and say, we can't get in there. We ain't got no money. We got to give all these people, these terrorists that we're bringing in, they're needing more money. You know, we ain't got time for this. We got a war. What if the war breaks out in the middle of the week and they ain't got no more we we just don't have any ability to have this war and save our people. So they'll choose the war. But if this last one, the last two in a row, have been remarkably stronger and more precision struck in the right areas, exactly where they want them, where they wouldn't normally go. We don't have storms like that in the Appalachians. That's just crazy. Not like that. Why? What's happened over the last few years? Is it global warming? No. Like I said, that Sahara area where it all starts is the way it's been for a long, long time. But I heard just a few months ago, sometime the early, I think it was around uh, June or something is when I heard this. I don't know. I don't remember exactly, but Saudi Arabia flooded. They had these big floods. And we were talking about the blob off the south, south tip of Africa, down by the Antarctic. And it was this weird blob that was a particular shape that didn't look natural. And every time we'd get one of these blobs, we'd it'd start moving up like a shaft going towards uh, the left side of Africa up the coast. And that area would get hit with a bunch of wind and storms and then it'd go right on up and the tropical flooding would be in Saudi Arabia and, and it hit in that area. And I remember hearing about that and thinking, well, that's a little odd, just like the ones we're having, a little odd, did the way they were doing it. And when I was looking at these blue bob blobs and people are finding little blue balls laying on the ground, which somebody investigated on TikTok and said they're, they have something to do with geoengineering of the rain and the weather 
That's a whole nother video. So there's proof galore that they're geoengineering this. But all of a sudden, I just read like last week or a few days ago in an article that the Sahara is now green. It's never been green as far as we can remember in our history. We, you know, they, some scientists said, oh, maybe it goes through cycles. It was that way thousands of years ago. But it's never been green like this. You can see from satellite pictures all green. And the heat that was up there in that area is moved down south, just a 100, 200 miles or something. And lower areas in Africa are getting hot and droughts and they're all dying of drought. Well, I thought, I wonder if they didn't do something to make that happen with that blob that we all saw a few months ago, this weird blob just before the Saudi Arabian floods. And I think people have seen it several times just before a bunch of floods went up and landed on Africa in the last few months. But I wonder if they didn't somehow manipulate that so that they could switch the trajectory of these hurricanes that come to us in the hurricane season. Because they seem to have been starting that in the spring and it took off during the early summer with the floods over there. And then we get to hurricane season and here they come and now the storms are three times bigger than they normally are. Now if that's the case, then they've got a way to make these storms bigger and there's probably more coming and it's going to hit Texas next because, you know, or Louisiana or somewhere. And there might be two or three of them coming. So I think Milton's going to be the most craziest, deadliest storm Although when you're up in the Appalachian Mountains and you get flooded and it's downstream flowing river, you get washed away, you die, it's gone. You don't, you don't just, like the ones in Florida, the water rises up and you could swim and find a tree and hold on or something. But in the Appalachians there around Asheville, all the water was rushing downhill, your house and everything went <clears throat> gone. So it was hard to survive it. You may, there may be more dead in that area. And the ones in Florida right now are evacuating most of them, I hope. The, I don't think there'll be anything to come back to because the economy will be gone. People aren't going to, most people, now maybe some, but most people aren't want to go back to a, a piece of land where there's nothing but a remains of an old garage in a basement. There's nothing there. Or a, you know fungi infected house that's all wet and damp the government would probably say it's illegal to even stay there because of the, the the fungi and stuff that's growing or the disease or this now we could have a plague remember they already had the mosquitoes that they were dropping the genetically mod modified mosquitoes that Billy the gatekeeper was making and dropping in that area we thought that was it that's all that there was to it, right? Nothing really big happened. We're fine. Don't you worry. Old Billy wasn't going to try to kill everybody. But maybe his goal was to get them to, to breed. And then he knew that they were going to plan this flood. In Florida, all the way up through Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Texas, all be damp houses and puddles of water still remaining here and there and flooding. And mosquitoes will just start breeding everywhere. You talk about something worse than malaria. And then there's the famine. Because if, if, and I could be wrong, but if thousands of people die and the bodies are not even found for weeks and the sewer is disrupted and flowing all over the place and the dead animals and dogs and cats and cattle and everything's laying around disease will will set in there will be plagues coming if it's real bad we already have seen what it did there and there's no roads to get in there and the, the government can easily because remember they're the ones running the show they could easily say, well, we ain't got time to fix all the roads. These roads are like washed out. You can't cross them. 
So even if somebody could get through on their motorbike to get granny or something, the rest, that whole Appalachian area is going to be, it's not going to anytime soon be rebuilt. The houses aren't going to be rebuilt. The people are going to have to, that, 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 they're going to have to eventually flee. Well, I ain't leaving my cabin out here in the woods. Yeah, but you've got no stores in, available in the area. No roads going in and out. No hospitals. Most of those people are older people. They're retired. I know I have a really good friend that that retired and took all of his savings and bought a house in that exact area near Asheville. And I haven't heard from him. And I pray to the Lord that they're okay. And I prayed for him. And I prayed for him. And and there was another dear sister that I contacted today. And she said she was all right. And I was so happy that lived in the area. But they spent all their money on this cabin in the woods to, to live their life in freedom and in peace. These are a lot of retired peoples in, in the Appalachians, as well as the hillbillies. And... Even if their house didn't get destroyed or something, which the Lord forbid. The mosquitoes, the plagues, the, the roads being out, no markets available. They become abandoned because World War III is starting and they got to put all the resources into World War III to help all the people coming over the border, the refugees. They got to they gotta be helped first, of course, because they're going to be Democratic voters. Now, after the aftermath of Milton, a couple of days from now, it's going to be horrific. People are going to be talking about this. It's all you're going to hear about. Voting already starting. All these peoples that are conservatives, yes, some of them will still vote, but it's likely a lot of them won't even be able to vote. There's no polling places. Some of them will travel if they have to. Some of them will mail it in if they find a post. Some of them will get the vote in, I'm sure. But you got to imagine it's going to stifle the vote from Texas and Florida and, and Louisiana and Alabama and Georgia. And this is where conservative peoples are. Carolina, the Appalachians, right? And North Carolina and these people were kind of leaning Trump. Georgia was leaning Trump. And so it isn't going to be good for any vote. But remember, they can do whatever they want. If they're going to go through this much trouble to vote in their man or their woman, because she's just a puppet, so they can do whatever they want and destroy the world. Remember, this is not to say that the conservatives are the good guys. It's They're playing the part. The bad guys have to win right now because they're not done with the carnage. Once the carnage is all done, the good guys come in and put you back under the law of Moses to get rid of all this transgendered terrorists and all these bad things. We all got to go back into the law of Moses and everybody will toe the line and everybody will be begging for it so we can buy and sell. And you won't be able to get the... You won't be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. Meaning, if you're not believing in the Ten Commandments and the laws of Moses and, and more police and more uh, arrests and, and crack down and mark upon your forehead so we know who you are, right? Then you won't be able to buy or sell. And that's why we're going to have to be out here where I'm at. Because all the Christians, political Christians, I should say, yeah, they we went to Florida. They went to Texas. But now look at, you're all down there in this one spot and they can bring all these hurt. They, they lured you down there. They lured you down there. So when this thing hits Texas, they've been practicing. They'll have one good one they'll get. Maybe it'll be Nadine or the one after that. And they'll lure that little hurricane up there and bullseye Houston. Why Houston? Because that's the biggest city on that gulf. Maybe New Orleans. Maybe it'll be directly in between and knock them both out. I don't know. I'm not saying... I'm not saying this is what's going to happen. I'm just saying this is what I foresee could happen. If they are trying to make it happen, then that's what they're going to try to do. If this has any rhyme or reason, it isn't just to win the election, though. Because the famine, the pestilence, the, the, the things that are coming, 
Once it starts spreading, people that live in Texas and Florida will get in their car and drive to Idaho and infect people there. They'll get in their car and drive to New York and infect people there or something. But of course, New York and California will probably have a fence and say, everybody stay out, right? You're infected, quarantine. We're going to quarantine the whole Texas, Florida, southern part of the country. You will have police at the borders. You won't be able to come in and go out. That could happen. But I don't know how that could happen because if we're in the middle of World War III, they're not going to have resources to do that either. But some of the sheriffs or local people might do that. And the people will, will say, yay, yay for martial law. But the one that hits Houston is probably going to be worse than the one that's striking Florida right now. It'll probably be so strong that the tropical storm will go all the way to Dallas, up through San Antonio and Austin. And millions and millions of people will be flooded. Then the mosquitoes will take off there. All the, bill, the, the, the things will, you know. Remember, Mar-a-Lago is in Florida. That probably wiped out. It'll be a symbol, right? Got them. We got them. Well, they're all playing parts. The only people's getting them, or the only people that got, gotten, was that, I see that on TikTok, that, you wanted to get them, didn't you? Yeah, I did want to get them. Well, you didn't want to get the ones that got them, but you want to got the ones that get them. I don't remember. It was funny, but that's kind of the way it's going to be. So I see that's how we get them. That's how they get the guys with the guns because when all this happens, you get civil war. They've already brought the um, border traffic shall we say, terrorists, mafia groups from China that infiltrated our country in the little sleeper cells. And they're on the north. Remember, they were they were taking them to New York. They were taking them up to Ohio and places like that. They would come to Texas and then they would bus them north. Well... I would, I'm not sure about this, but somebody might look this up, but I'll bet you that all those sleeper cells went above the Texas border, Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, and the Appalachians, and went to places like Ohio, Indiana. I know there's lots of them in the Wisconsin, Indiana area. And maybe the New York and, and Maine and all that. Because we just saw that video yesterday where they're up there in Maine or something. New England area. Well, when the Civil War comes, they probably would have lost that war. Because these hillbillies got their shotguns. Right? And there's a lot of people packing in Texas. I guarantee it. But if all those people either get flooded, they got some disease, they're in the hospital, they're gone. And the ones that are left have to move because there's no more infrastructure then we don't have anybody to we don't have nobody to protect ourselves we don't have any way to do anything about these criminal gangs that are going to come into our cities what's left of our cities loot them shoot us rape us And that's the way the cookie crumbles, as Beretta would say. Uh, Robert Blake, if you can remember back that far. Robert Blake, by the way, Robert Blake was a child star from the Mickey Mouse Club way back in the day. And, uh, you know, and after the Mickey Mouse Club, he was a famous child star. He becomes a television star doing one of their big series, Beretta. Well, did you know, you probably know that Britney Spears was a Mickey Mouse Club. But all the other big famous people, Christina Aguilera, Justin Timberlake, these kinds of people, it seems to me in order to become a big movie star you start from a child they run you through a program at the mickey mouse club at disney 
It's like the people behind Disney that's for children. It's satanic. Demonic. And it appears that they're having sex with these children. Using them, taking their money. And, I mean, they have other ways. They did Donnie and Marie Osmond another way. They paid their parents a lot of money to groom them and, and you know, the Jackson 5 and, and, and all that. But Texas is a big state. They might need two hurricanes. And they might need two of the worst hurricanes we've ever had. Now, listen, that would be very suspicious. But you got to re realize... We're going to be in the middle of World War III. It don't matter how suspicious it is. It's over. And in order to have this work out the way they want, where we're gone, it's like with a war, right? You don't want to upset the enemy too much until you're ready to go all out because you got to make sure you can get a first strike. Get them off guard. And you don't want to do it or preemptive too soon, right? Because if you waste your wad on that and it doesn't work then they you're gone and then they come back and get you so you've got to plan this just right if we're going to have a one world government coming and you know buddy that we're we are and you know they're planning it and the agenda 21 and all this agenda 30 you know that they're going to do it and this global warming and all of this garbage is either excuses to tax us more, to give, take away our weapons and our cars and everything and send us back to our houses to stay down there in the basement and fiddle on our phone and watch the whole thing come to an end. And they'll laugh at us the whole time. And here it is, it's built up like a casendo. We're here. They're preparing us for the destruction of Jerusalem. They're, they're making fun of the people that live there, if you know what I mean. And... They're making it like so that both sides, even the conservatives, can say how they feel sometimes. Like, oh, we're being killed. It's all being manipulated. But they don't care anymore. Time's up. You're done. You didn't do anything. You didn't stand up. You went ahead and cheered for the guy that was controlled opposition. Oh, we love Alex Jones. Oh, we love Tucker Carlson, though his dad was CIA. Oh, we love Trump, even though he's, you know, a billionaire, loved by the left, got all the perks, went on all the late night shows and everybody loved him and he had his own television program, just like the Disney. They bring him along, they string him along, they all play parts. Trump was on the Epstein Island too. Oh, but he didn't know where he was, you know? He didn't even know it was an island and he didn't know the man. I don't even know the man. Remember the Apostle Peter? Did you know that you're with Jesus? And he's like, no, I don't know Jesus. I've never even met the man. Started cursing to make it look like he wasn't part of that group. And so, we're just being corralled into this situation where they take all the people they don't like, the political Christians who want the good life, Right? Down there in Florida, on the beach, a good job working in a hospital, putting thingies in people's arms that you don't believe in, right? Taking children and making them transgender. Oh, but this is a good life. We believe in the doctors, Dave. We, we've got to go to war, get that dadgum Putin, right? What about the Putin in our office? The, I mean, the Biden. Well, he doesn't know what he's doing. It's not his fault, Dave. Mr. Magoo just fell off the stage. Don't make fun of an old man. And by the way, Kamala's a woman. You can't make fun of her either. And if she says she's black, then she's black. So, what, we got to have a black person? That's the only person we can have? Is that going to somehow make it? Oh, well, she's black. Then I guess we'll just let her rape and pillage our children and cut their wee-wees off. Of course. <laughs> Whatever. Let them bring in the terrorists. We don't care. She's black. And she's a woman, so, hey, that's all we care about. Well, the only way that would be all that we care about is that the only people who are doing any caring are the people coming over the borders. And, of course, they want, they're going to vote 
us off the ship, right? Us Americans got to get voted off the island because we don't want to give up our perk jobs and all of our beautiful ranches and farms and our Christian value. We don't want to give that up willingly. So we were thinking it was just big crisis and we'll, we'll battle it off out at the ballot box and we'll win this and, you know, we'll just keep praying to the Lord while we continue to stay in Babylon with our satin sheets and all of our porn and all of our violence and all of our allowances for the uh, babies that are murdered every day and all the drugs and the, we see the people walking in the streets, flipping around in the streets, thousands of them in every city, thousands. And it's just a little nuisance. It's just a little pro. Yeah. Do you realize that nicotine was made by the Germans as a biological weapon? I know nicotine was known before then, but they took it and began to use it as a biological weapon. And it was after World War II that they started flooding the waves of the air with these advertisements that you should go out and start smoking. But it wasn't just nicotine. Nicotine had been around for thousands of years. It was the tar and all the chemicals that they would put in the cigarettes. And it literally was a biological weapon. I'll tell you about that in another video. Cars and Volkswagens were a biological weapon, basically, or a, a weapon anyway. The cars, the television, all this was not made because of advancement and we have all these wonderful things. We get to watch TV and be entertained. No, it was propaganda. It was a weapon. It started after World War II, basically. I mean, it started in World War I with television, radio. I mean, you can go back for, you know, all this has been planned. In order to get to the point where we are at now, remember that time I told you that we were sitting around watching uh, New Orleans flood and Houston get hit, and we saw this before, time after time. Well, they wanted it. They wanted to do it back then, right? But they had to wait for the in infrastructure to be put in place. They had to wait for the phones, the technology, the computers. They had to wait for the the uh, thingy, right? They had that was a experiment to see what they could do with the people. This thingy. Well, those other hurricanes that we saw coming that were like twos and threes and maybe a four that was wiping out thousands of people for years were just experiments. They were learning how to do it. We weather modification has been an experiment that they've been working on. Okay, they got it now. Just like all these diseases. Autoimmune deficiency, AID, which is AIDS. They've been working on it. They sent it in a little, they put it in aspirin, sent it to Africa, and that's where it started, and all the Africans started getting it, and then they experimented on them. And then they experimented on the uh, gay people in the world. And it was just gay people that had it. And now everyone's got it, and you don't even know it. It's called cancer, arthritis, Diabetes, those are autoimmune deficiency. Leukemia, that's AIDS. And they've been able to weaken it a tad bit so that you don't just get it and you're dead, but that, that, that you get it, it becomes active after about three years, four or five years, sometimes depending on how you eat. And then you got to go to the doctor and he'll tell you you've got it. And that you need some treatments and they can make a lot of money. They That way they can bankrupt you before you die. They can take your home, your kid. You don't leave anything to your children. This was a long-term plan to torture and maim and experiment us on us. Why do you think they did Jim Jones? They were, they were trying to understand people and how to manipulate them. David Koresh was working for the CIA. That was a, so was Jim Jones. That was a, the Waco thing was a experiment on people. Richard Butler in Hayden Lake, Idaho. The neo-Nazis, another CIA agent. I know because my mother interviewed him and he admitted it. The government was literally 
recruiting from the prisons neo-Nazis. They would give them a lesser sentence if they joined the neo-Nazis. It was like a gang. And then they were sending him in the cities and rioting and doing terrible things and running drugs and murdering our children that way. They were running drugs. Well, it's the same program we got now. Right here, these sleeper cells. This has been going on for a long, long time, and nobody seems to have known until recently. They're starting to wake up on this. Why do you think they did Jehovah's Witnesses? It's a mental MK Ultra mind program on the people to learn how to manipulate them. They learned all they needed to learn from Jehovah's Witnesses and the, the modern Mormons. They put them in the FBI and the, you know different groups. And now they're using it on the public all the way around. We're worshiping the government now. And they know how to get everybody to stand in line and just do whatever they're told. And the crazy thing about it, I know a lot of you are saying, oh no, they're not going to get me, Dave. Oh boy, I'm, I'm awake. But you don't understand that many of the things that you think you've woken to is their plan. They want anarchy. It's funny how some of these things that we're waking up to are lies. Now we believe in aliens. We don't believe in Jesus no more. We don't believe in Paul, right? We we got to go back and become Judeans and keep all the holy days and keep the law now. Well, you then put yourself back under judgment. Now the devil has every right to wipe you out in his wrath because you didn't receive the love of the truth that you might be saved from the wrath that's coming. We were warned, but we didn't listen. We're just lukewarm. We didn't read the scriptures. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit would bring to mind everything I've told you. Well, he told us the stuff that's in the Bible. But if you didn't know what Jesus ever said in the first place, you'd not, the Holy Mind, the Holy Spirit wouldn't bring that back to your mind. Wouldn't You wouldn't have those scripture verses ready. And the puzzle pieces wouldn't fit when it all began to come down. You didn't have any oil lamp. You got to go back into town to get some more oil. And friends, I can give you my testimony that that's exactly what's happened. That's what that's what gives me inspiration, the revelation, the light, the illumination. I'm just sitting around minding my own business and boom, see something in the news or see something over here happening and my mind goes, bingo! And I get a revelation. He brings, the Holy Spirit brings to mind the things in which Jesus said. And then I remember that the Lord said that he was going to do this. And it begins to make sense what the Lord said when he said it. Now that we're experiencing the time when it was for us. Because he says, I'll send you the Holy Spirit. You don't need a man to teach you. But I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. And she will teach you all things you need to know in the hour you need to know it. That's what revelation is. You don't need to know anything until the time that you need to know it. And the Holy Spirit needs knows when you need to know, knows what you need and when you need it. Just trust the Lord. You don't even have to say many words, right? Just put your faith and trust in the Lord and give him thanks and praise his holy name and he'll take care of you. He really will. But everybody's got a theory. Everybody hates each other. Right? Oh, you believe in Jesus. I'm going to kill you. Oh, you, you're a Muslim. I don't like Muslims. Oh, you're a, you know, a terrorist. It's possible that we'll all backfire on them. Right? But I think they've, they've taken into consideration... All of this, I think we're at the end of the age. It's all going to be depopulated. It's going to be over like the days of Noah. I don't think there's anything we can do about this. Because even if we're waking up in the middle of it, and at the very end, we refuse to go and murder our brother, and we get to go to heaven. We've washed our robes in the blood of the Lamb. We've gone through the Great Tribulation. This is probably the, the test that we're all going through, and the testers testing us. But in the meantime, most people... We're not going to be valiant. They didn't follow the lamb wherever he goes. They didn't have oil in their lamps. They had to go off into town to get some oil. Doesn't mean they didn't want oil. They know righteousness is good and love, but they didn't have any. 
They were going to do it later. Right now they got a career in nursing with a lot of people's arms to prick. They got a lot of patients that they've got to put in a ventilator and radiate their lung out. You know, hey, it's just my job. Or all the cops. You realize how many cops and policemen there are all over the place? They make pretty good money to get to run around with a vest and a gun, harass people, shoot people on the street. If you did that, if you went to war, made a lot of money or a career out of going to war or military or the police or the health industry, or you were a lawyer or any anywhere in the lawyer field or a social service worker, you joined Satan. And his one world government. It's already been happening. So they've got this perfected now. And anyone who was in, in any of that. If they don't immediately right now. Get out of it. Disown it. Confess their sin. Wake up entirely. And understand that evil is no place to be. That we will never. We, we, we must be absolutely certain and promise to ourselves and to everyone around us. And we must go out and warn people about the health industry and the social services and, and all these evil things that are going on and have nothing to do with it. If you participate in any of these fields, if you were about the only thing you could do in this United States for the last 50 years, it wasn't immoral, is maybe be a, a chef, a home... Maybe a, a janitor or something, a carpenter, right? A, a painter, a musician, as long as you were singing songs that were wholesome and true. But there are some, all these major things that people did for a living weren't even things you could do for a living. They were just working for Satan. It was like a, a satanic ritual. And we've got to repent of that. But I think that something's going to hit Texas. And with all of these political conservatives and these Christians being displaced, their house is gone, their guns are swept down the river, they don't even have any more. That's one way to get rid of the guns out of the Christian's hands. The guns are in the gun closet, right? The house went down the river. You got no more guns. They're probably going to get 50% of the guns off the street that way. I'm sure there's a lot of Christians that took their guns and left. But they're going to be displaced. They ain't got nowhere to go. They're going to be homeless and they'll have to sell that gun just to get some food here pretty quick. They'll trade it for a bag of beans and it'll be in the hands of the terrorists. And the terrorists are going to be like prepared because the government's going to be financing them, making sure they have state-of-the-art guns and weapons and all kinds of you know, housing for free. They don't have to pay any rent. They don't have to pay the water bill or anything. And they'll be running drugs into our communities, murdering our children. But they're not in the flood zone. It'll just be the Christians in the flood zone and in the famine zone. And talk about 15-minute cities. I mean, like I said, if it really does happen that all these hurricanes hit, like I think, all the way to Texas, and all these people are basically developing famine, disease, and pestilence. They may, they may stop us from leaving. You may not be allowed to leave Texas or Florida. That area could be where I've made the lines. Texas and even, you know, Arkansas. Remember, what's that woman, her dad, Huckabee, Huckabee, Huckabee ran, that's conservative, Tennessee and all of West Virginia. So that, that may be the area w which will be hit by the tropical storms and the deluges and the plagues and then the famines will begin and the pestilence and they may just lock us down in that area. I personally would get out of there. I think you should go into the Rocky Mountains and I think that's the place that's been prophesied. The only place you'll be able to survive because those people when they're being locked down in the south Maybe they'll find their GU, you know, <clears throat> uh, their bullets and dig them up out of the, the swamp and 
go up there in the north and maybe there'll be a, a battle, but it'll be an uphill battle, right? Because they won't have any food, any resources, but the the the, the border shifters will have all the resources that they need. And they won't be living in squalor. They'll have beautiful houses up in Maine. <laughs> yeah. And it'll just be kind of like, you know, Escape from New York. Remember that one? Or Escape from L.A. by uh, Kurt Russell, right? They'll just put a wall around the whole southern area of the United States. And the dead bodies will start piling up and the stink and the disease. And that's how they win the Civil War. Anywho, it's just a thought. But I see we're well over an hour and I've rambled on here. Probably long enough. So we'll end it here and wish you a good evening. Be safe. If you're in Florida, I hope you're out of there by now. And I pray the Lord will bless you and keep you and comfort you and bring you to safety and, and to salvation and that you're able to thrive. And I pray that all that hear me will take my advice and leave the East Coast and the Southern States and go to the Rocky Mountains. I'm David Vos. I hope you have a wonderful evening. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one.